More information is coming out about the East Hawaii siren failure that happened during this weekend's tsunami warning. County officials are blaming a computer glitch for the failure of numerous sirens on Saturday night. Here is the report filed with the assistance of Tim Bryan about the problem. Although all shorelines and low-lying areas were evacuated safely, there were some problems with emergency sirens. Reports of late siren soundings flooded the internet and radio airwaves. Most accounts agreed that the sirens were heard in Hilo by 9 p.m. However, in Kona, they had already been sounding for some time. Douglas Pacheco told us he first heard sirens in Hilo only an hour and a half before the predicted surge. What's the deal with the sirens? I don't know. It's supposed to go on earlier, but they never did come on, so I think it was malfunction. Like I said, about a half ago, my nephew told me about this, and I said, there's no sirens yet. Yeah, and people leave your car, you know what I mean? They got to get everything out. And there were similar accounts from residents in Puna and Hamakua. Some said no sirens sounded at all. Um, some sirens were not, did not go off initially. Mayor Kanoi confirmed that there were issues with the system. Um, but our first responders, police and fire, were already uh, in process of evacuation shoreline, coastline areas. So a lot of uh, uh, manual uh, alerts went out uh, subsequently by 9 p.m. with still uh, over 90 minutes spare all of the sirens uh, were reported to be working. The mayor credited the large emergency force working on the ground helping residents with Saturday's smooth evacuation despite some problems. And, and it's just uh, the community and the first responders uh, having utilized the airport as an evacuation zone in spite of the construction down in that, in that area uh, people uh, were able to safely evacuate. So yes, in spite of the not every siren having gone off um, and in spite of monthly testing, uh, everything worked well because people were out on the streets working really hard. Oh, you must watch the TV and Open the computers. Wireless, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The county also promised to station personnel at all sirens during the monthly test on November 1st to, quote, ensure that they are operating as expected in concert with Hawaii State Civil Defense, unquote. State Civil Defense owns and maintains the sirens while Hawaii County Civil Defense coordinates their operation and conducts the monthly tests. And uh, you know all the credit goes to these hardworking individuals back here who keep our island safe and most importantly a lot of appreciation and thanks goes to our residents, our businesses, people in the Hawaii Island community who um, responded uh, really well. Uh, everybody evacuated safely, uh, respectfully. There was some challenges out there in the community and some confusion, uh, but ultimately everybody was evacuated uh, in time and safely. According to a news article by Tom Callis in the Hawaii Tribune Herald, an estimated eight to ten sirens are believed to have failed when the alarms were first sounded at 8.15 p.m. during an automatic activation process started by police. The glitch was corrected in time for the 9.15 p.m. siren when the system was activated manually from the dispatch center in Hilo, according to the newspaper. There has been plenty of concern expressed in the community about the siren failure. On our website alone, we had a number of comments on the glitch. Some even said the sirens never went off at all in their neighborhood. Talking about the reportedly late sirens, Louise Butler commented, quote, if late means never happened, yes, they were late in some parts of Pune, end quote. Also, G.B. Hajim, director at Island Planet One Production, said through Facebook that no sirens ever sounded at Onomea. Another matter concerning tsunami sirens is being rehashed by North Kohala Councilman Pete Hoffman. In a Tuesday editorial released to media, Hoffman again questioned why considerable portions of the island's coastline, with sizable developments, do not have any tsunami sirens. Quote, why is it that after two previous tsunamis, he wrote, quote, some resort areas do not have a single siren in place. Didn't we stress this danger last year and the year before? End quote.
Indeed, it has been a crusade of Hoffman's over the past few years. This file video shows Hoffman arguing the point at a county council meeting. But we began working on this particular effort because it was brought to my attention by a couple of residents of the residential areas down in the resort areas that there were gaps in uh, the uh, er, siren warning systems that existed in these areas. There, uh, for whatever reason, any number of good or bad reasons, there simply weren't tsunami sirens available along our coastline in some of our high rent districts, if you will, or even in our hotel areas like down in the Waikoloa Resort. According to a June email exchange Big Island Video News had with Donald and Dela Cruz, then the Deputy Director of Communications for the Office of the Hawaii Governor, a $20 million release for various capital improvement projects in this state are to upgrade 13 sirens on the Big Island and to add 15 new sirens in the tsunami evacuation areas. The new sirens include six sirens between Honolii Beach Park and Mackenzie Beach Park on the windward side of the island, seven sirens between Mahukona Park and Kona Village Resort along the Kohala Coast, two sirens between Ho'okena Beach and Ho'opuloa in South Kona. The governor's office says the state civil defense works with the Hawaii County Civil Defense to identify and prioritize locations that need sirens. De La Cruz also said the siren sites are contingent on being able to secure leases and complete the permitting process. Sadly, Saturday's otherwise successful evacuation wasn't without crime. Big Island police are investigating several break-ins that took place in the Keokaha area of Hilo during the tsunami scare on Saturday night. Eight residential burglaries were reported on Kalani Anaole Avenue, easy pickings for crooks, since most of the seaside neighborhood left through the closed Hilo airport earlier in the evening, leaving the place deserted. The burglaries are no small matter. Police are investigating each incident as a burglary of a dwelling during a civil defense emergency, which is a Class A felony punishable by up to 20 years in prison. Police ask that anyone with information about these burglaries, or for that matter, anyone who did not evacuate and saw suspicious persons in the area, to call Sergeant James Correa at 961-2289 or the police department's non-emergency line at 935-3311. Tipsters who prefer to remain anonymous may call Crime Stoppers at 961-8300 in Hilo or 329-8181 in Kona and may be eligible for a reward of up to $1,000. Crime Stoppers is a volunteer program run by ordinary citizens who want to keep their community safe. Crime Stoppers doesn't record calls or subscribe to caller ID. All Crime Stoppers information is kept confidential.